using it to walk and chew gum at the same time. When we first brought the Amiga home, we were all excited because of all the potential. And we put up a demo program called Kaleidoscope that was just these incredible, gorgeous colors and shapes. And for two hours, we sat there and watched it going, wow, to each other. And then we called up our friends. We came over and said, wow. Because prior to that, I mean, working in offices, you get to know a lot of personal computers because that's what everybody uses. And I didn't like IBMs because they were just so slow and stodgy and everything they had to do about it was so business oriented that, you know, I'm a novelist and trying to be creative on an IBM was like beating your head against the wall. One of the things about the Amiga that still puts it ahead of every other machine that's out there, and I don't care how much it costs, is the fact that it multitasks so well. IBM, they keep promising OS2 and they keep promising this and they keep promising that. The Macintosh has come out with this thing called MultiFinder. It's not multitasking, it's different. It's, it's not having programs which can interact with each other at the same exact time. I mean, you could have, actually have a program feeding another program data and then process the data with the second program while you're doing something totally different. Multitasking eliminates the need for a printer buffer for one thing because you can have the machine printing while you go and you do some more word processing. He's using it to inspire his students. Art is a very time intensive process and how uh, for the changes and looking at the image and considering it and so forth and a lot of the process needs to be able to accommodate inspiration, which means that a person needs to say, aha, I have an idea, and be able to go right to their system. This was a uh, exercise from the intro class uh, using um, paid software. This is from the 3D class. This is from the uh, intro class, building objects from primitive forms. This is uh, where we introduce the students to 3D computer graphics. In order to produce these type of graphics on the system, it would cost you two to three times what it cost you to do it on the Amiga. It's a funny thing about the computer, it's kind of like uh, pilots that fly, I'm a pilot, I like um, musicians, you know, when you find one chord, you say, man, did you try that dominant seven chord, you know, same thing with the computer, you start to fool with it and every, you want to share it with your friends, so I start to talk and then, which I never did learn, still haven't learned computer talk as some do, but I get my question over, how do you do this? and they started to show me and that's when I fell in love with the Amiga computer. He's using it to explore the oceans. We needed some way to superimpose um, relevant inf information that the vehicle is heading, how deep it is, uh, things of that nature. We wanted to display it directly on the screen so that the operator, while he's, we call it flying the vehicle, is operating the vehicle. He can, without taking his eyes off the screen where he's driving, he can tell where he's going and how, how deep he is. With the Amiga, we found that you know, here at Deep Ocean Engineering that it's so easy to create graphic images and really helps to get your ideas across. He uses it in his whole life. The Amiga finds its way into every nook and cranny in our business and in our home, uh, just as an entertainment uh, computer. I mean, there is nothing better to play games on if you, if you like games. I particularly like a lot of the flight simulator games. I am a musician also, so I've got a, a great variety of the, of the sequencing software for, for music, and we've got it hooked up with, with a PostScript laser printer, which gives us typeset quality output. In the area of ray tracing and 3D animation, when this computer first came out, it absolutely stunned the video industry and the computer industry because this they thought was not possible on a computer that was less than several hundred thousand dollars. We've used um, other computers, uh, IBM computers, Mac computers, uh, certainly the Amiga, and other uh, video specialty computers uh, such as a, a Dubner and a Paintbox and an Alias. Uh, we use all of those in our work, but, but I would say that what we have found for the Amiga is that because of its price performance, it's, it's enabled a whole class of corporate users to use the Amiga to use computer graphics and animation that previously couldn't. I edit uh, my professional productions at some of the top video editing facilities in New York City. 
and I am the only one that they allow to bring an Amiga into a professional video facility and when I do there is a crowd that gathers in the edit suite because here are people used to seeing computers that cost a quarter of a million dollars and they say this they see this outperforming it and they can't believe it he's using it to sustain a legend if you have an idea that you want to create something and if you're like I am at that have an arranger and I can't tell him exactly what I want I can't say like I want this chord to sound like this or sound like that I can put it in the Amiga and the Amiga will tell him because it will play it the way I want it I can't write real good but I can pick out or take my guitar I got my fingers in the position on, on Lucille here and I'm holding it here and I got this hand on the Amiga and I'm going with that because I know this is what I want, that's what I want, this is what I want and I put it in the Amiga and the Amiga plays it back.